Did you know that you can upgrade your Synology NAS unit to two and a half gigabit ethernet even if it doesn't officially support it? Like if you have an older uh, NAS device like this Synology DS920 Plus, um, there's only like a one or two one gigabit ethernet ports in the back and uh, some of the other models have like four of them but uh, still only one gigabit ethernet. Now some of the newer models actually come with a little rectangular module here you can slide in and it supports 10 gigabit ethernet or two and a half gigabit ethernet on that same port. And some of the larger units actually have a full PCIe slot in here as well. Now, if you have an older unit or you don't want to spend the money to upgrade those, because those can cost upwards of $100 to $250 just to add that module, you can go about doing this by using a, a USB adapter to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, so why do I need a 10, 12, 15 minute video showing me how to do this? Just plug this into uh, Synology NAS. Now, if you're a Windows or Mac user, you're probably used to just plugging this into your machine and it auto-detects it and configures it and away you go, or you might have to install a driver, just download it, run it, and go. Well, that is not such the case on a Synology NAS unit because it's kind of a closed system. Even though it is Linux-based, it's still, um, they kind of uh, lock it down as far as what you can install, so you have to kind of sideload a, a driver. Luckily, that there is a driver out there, and I'll show you how to go through that process in order to get that installed so you can actually use something like this. Now, these type of devices actually come with a Realtek uh, Ethernet chip, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet chip, and uh, I'll show you the details on that. Now, they do have drivers for Windows as well as for Mac and for Linux, but uh, you can't use any of those specifically for the Synology NAS. And additionally, in order to get the 2.5 gigabit speed, obviously you're going to need a 2.5 uh, gigabit network card for your computer. Uh, maybe you already have it built into your motherboard or you have an add-in card like this. And then uh, you're either going to need a, a switch or you can do a direct connect from the Synology NAS unit to the adapter card if you want to, if you just want one machine to connect to it. it kind of go through those different scenarios. So just for reference, here's the Synology uh, module for that, the little square module that you can get to install in your Synology NAS. And it's like 110 bucks on Amazon. You can uh, also get the PCIe slot adapter if you wanted to. That's like 140 bucks. And uh, you can also get it on the Synology shop if you want to. And uh, you can see here it's also 110 bucks for that little guy here. Now here's the pluggable adapter that I purchased and I know it works specifically. You can also find these on AliExpress or eBay for probably about anywhere from five to 15 bucks. So you can get it cheaper if you want to. And they all do reference the same Realtek driver um, that this one can use for Windows. So it should work uh, in the Synology box as well because it's the same chipset. So if you want to go that route, obviously up to you. Now there's some information you're going to need in order to get this to work. Okay, first thing you're going to need to do is log into your DSM. And uh, you're going to need your IP address of your device. Now if you see down here, you've got the little uh, system health thing here. It tells me what my IP address is here. Or usually you type it into your URL of your browser, or you can go into your control panel and go to network, and then you'll see under network interface, there's what's connected right there, 192.168.1.2, which is my NAS here. Additionally, you're going to need to know your DSM version, as well as your CPU name. You can get that as well from the control panel. Go to Info Center, and then you can see here, I'm using DSM 7.2. Make sure you make note of that. And also the type of CPU that you're using. Now you don't just need to know your CPU type of CPU you're using, you need to know the code name or the manufacturing process of that CPU. In order to determine that, you're gonna to need to just Google it and then go to the product page. In this case, if it's usually their Intel products, um, and here it says products formerly Gemini Lake. So my J4125 and my NAS is a Gemini Lake CPU. So you're gonna need that in order to get the proper driver. And then lastly, you're going to need to get some sort of SSH client and uh, I recommend PuTTY, and PuTTY is a free uh, tool, and it basically allows you to connect over SSH to your NAS unit through the command line, And uh, but you need to make sure that's set up in your DSM as well. In order to do that, go back to your DSM, go to Control Panel, go down to Terminal and SNMP, and then Enable SSH Service, and just leave the default port as fine for now. Go ahead and apply. It's going to give you a warning, hit OK and then we're done there. So the next step is to actually grab the driver. There is this uh, user on 
GitHub called BB-QQ out of Osaka, Japan. And uh, you can see here the R8152, that is the uh, device uh, chipset, the Realtek 8152, which is used for the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter. If you just go here and you go down to the releases here, go ahead and click on that guy, and they give you good instructions here. And then what you want to do is scroll down to your name of your CPU, and then also make sure you identify your DSM version. So in this case, Gemini Lake 7.2, and go ahead and click it and download it. Now, before we continue, I wanted to make note that this user also supports a another a 5 gigabit ethernet adapter this ac aqc 111 the aquantia aquantia not sure how you pronounce that aqc 111u 5 gigabit based usb ethernet adapter as well so if you want to go that route you could do that too so now you want to go back to your dsm and then go ahead and go to the package center now if you don't see package center here you can just go up to the little guy here and it should be right there so open that up then you want to go to manual install here and then go ahead and browse, and then browse to the location where you downloaded that file from, right? In this case, I did it to my downloads folder, and here it is, R8152 Gemini Lake SPK file. Go ahead and open, and click Next. Now, okay, package provided by third-party developers, we're aware of that, we're good, agree. Now, before we go ahead and click Done here, just want to make note that you make sure you read the README here. And they do indicate that the installation will fail the first time. So you're going to expect to see that. And after that, you got to run this following command from the SSH terminal, which is why we need that putty to log into our NAS device. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and click done. And it's going to say it's going to fail. Okay, failed to install the package. Now this is where you want to launch putty. Okay, now here's putty. And if you're not familiar, all you have to do is plug in the IP address of your Synology NAS unit, in this case, minus 192.168.1.2 and port 22. Go ahead and open. And you're going to get this warning potential security breach the first time you connect, basically because it hasn't established connection yet. So it's basically saying, okay, this is new. I don't recognize it. So I uh, just want to warn you and go ahead and accept. You should not see this on subsequent connections, however. Now you're going to want to log in as the same user as you logged into your DSM. And now you can just leave it here. Now what you're going to want to do is go back to that README. And then you can see here the command. You can go ahead and just highlight it. Right click, copy. And then go back to Alt-Tab to my putty. And then all you have to do is right click here. And it'll go ahead and paste that command into the uh, prompt here. Now because it is a pseudo command, it's going to ask for your password. And now once it's done it, just like that, it's been executed. So that's all you have to do with this. You can go ahead and exit out of here if you want to. And then you go ahead and click OK on this uh, Confirm Settings thing and click Done again. Now this uh, process will take maybe about a minute. OK, now when that's done, I can go ahead and see here on the Installed tab here, you should see the RTL8152-8153 driver here. Go ahead and click on it, and it says it's running. Now you can go ahead and plug in your USB adapter. Now you can plug it in the front or the back, and it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to plug it in the front so it's visible. And go ahead. Now if we go over to our control panel here, go to Network, and then go to Network Interface, and it should pop up here. It's not showing here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop, and go ahead and run it again. And there it popped up here. Now, if it does not uh, connect here, then you're going to probably want to reboot your Synology NAS. So I should have noted that when you go to do this, you probably don't want to have a um, any processes running like a scrub or anything because you may have to reboot your machine. But in any case, it popped up right here. So now, uh, all we have to do is hook it up to our network, and we should have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet speeds. Okay, now this next step is basically going to depend on how your network is set up, right? And... Uh, so if you already have a 2.5 gigabit uh, switch and a way to connect that switch to a DHCP server, you can just plug it into that 2.5 gigabit switch and go from there. Now if you just want to connect a singular PC or multiple PCs to the NAS device separate from your normal network, you can do that as well. One way to do that is to just get a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch like I have here. This is a dumb switch, so there's no DHCP server or anything. 
Uh, basically, you have to assign your own IP addresses if you want to go that route. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that, because if you just want to hook up like one device to your Synology NAS, you go through a switch, or you can connect your PC. This cable comes directly from my PC, the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and I can plug it directly into here. So if we go that route, go ahead and plug it into uh, here. Now we want to go and assign IP addresses both on the PC as well as your NAS unit. Now keep in mind that you're still going to be having your gigabit Ethernet uh, port there connected to your normal network if you want it. Um, and obviously on the PC you can't just connect directly to the NAS unit and expect it to connect to your normal network. So you're going to need a second uh, Ethernet adapter in order to connect both to your normal network as well as directly to the NAS unit like this. So to change your IP address in the NAS unit, go ahead and go to your DSM, go to Control Panel, go to Network, go to your Network Interface, and then choose your Network Interface for your USB adapter. Go ahead and right-click Edit, and then you want to do a manual configuration. Now, if you're not familiar with how IP addressing works, uh, you can just follow this way. I'm going to go 192.168.25.20, okay? Now, normally my network is on a 192.168.1. whatever, and I want to do it on a separate network just so that way it stays segmented from the other traffic and doesn't conflict with the DHCP addresses that I've got. So the subnet mask is going to want to be 255.255.255.0. So these three uh, octets here are part of the network, and then I have 254 uh, network addresses I can put in for the host. And uh, go ahead and click OK and it should configure it and away it goes okay now you're going to want to go to your desktop pc and go ahead and right click on the start menu go to network connections or find network connections in your settings and then you're going to want to scroll down to change adapter adapter options now i'm using windows 10 here so windows 11 i think it's it should be similar in the same spot and then you want to find the ethernet adapter that uh, is equated to the one that connects to your Synology NAS that I have here. So this is my main one that goes to my main network. This one here is the one that's connected to um, over to this USB adapter here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Right click, properties, and then you want to go down to Internet Protocol version 4, hit properties, and then here you want to plug in your IP address. Now I had already plugged this in, 192.168.25.10. And 255, 255, 255.0 on the subnet mask. Now you want to make sure that you put this in through this type of interface because on Windows 11, I believe, uh, they do have a way to do it through the settings page, but uh, it forces you to put in a gateway and you don't need a gateway. You just want the IP address and subnet mask. So once you do this, this basically tells it, okay, it's on the same network, and this one is a dot 10, and that uh, Synology NAS is a dot 20 and go ahead and click OK, and then you may want to go down to your IPv6 here and deselect it. So now we can address our Synology NAS unit through Windows Explorer here by going to either by default 192.168.1.2, which will be 1 gigabit Ethernet. There's the test folder I set up. Nothing in there currently. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a file transfer. I have this uh, 5 gigabit Five gigabyte uh, Ubuntu ISO file here and uh, you can see it's a normal one gigabyte right there's your speed 110 megabytes per second that's about the maximum throughput you can expect for one gigabyte gigabit Ethernet connection 113 megabytes per second all right there it is and if you go into your DSM file station you can see it's right there so it's moved there so I'm going to go back to Windows Explorer here and the, uh, I'm going to delete this file because I'm going to transfer it again, but over the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet to test that. So to do that, we're going to go to the new 192.168.25.20. We're going to connect from the desktop to here, and it's going to ask for login credentials. And there's that same folder, right? And so now I'm going to go and transfer the same file over. And now you can see it's transferring at the faster speed, 270, 280 megabytes per second. So the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is working. Now obviously, if you have maybe two desktop PCs with a similar setup as that, 
you can go through a switch and hook them the uh, all up to the switch and hook the Synology NAS up to that as well. And then that way they can all access it at the faster speed if you want to. But you're going to have to configure the IP addresses manually unless you set up a DHCP server of some sort. And uh, you could connect uh, your switch over to your normal network LAN and get that set up, but that's outside the scope of this video. So in any case, uh, that's about it. Hopefully it was helpful. And until next time, talk to you later.